Thanks for joining us this evening. We are going to make the cauliflower crust pizza. I wanted to show you guys how simple this is, and it's actually a pretty big day for us because tomorrow I'm doing a big product launch at Easton Whole Foods, who is now carrying my cauliflower dough. Um, and that's what we're making tonight, if you guys can see. Mmm, it's the grain-free, so gluten-free cauliflower dough. There's only three ingredients in here, you guys. We have cauliflower, Asiago cheese, and egg. That is it. That is how simple this is. So it's really awesome, um, really, really, really easy. But a lot of people don't believe me when I say it's so easy, so I brought my handsome assistant, also known as my husband, I brought him here tonight so he can actually show you just how easy it is. And he's a pizza connoisseur, by the way, you guys. So, honey, did you preset the oven to 400? Yes, I Check did. one. All right, now go ahead. You have your baking sheet in front of you here. Go ahead and put your piece of parchment paper on. And you guys wanna make sure that you're using parchment paper. You can also use a sill pad. Those work fine as well. I'm a little resistant to using the pizza stones. It's not that you can't use a pizza stone, but if you're using a pizza stone, make sure you warm it up in the oven at about 450 degrees for 30 minutes. Uh, make sure that pizza stone is really, really hot. Then pull the pizza stone out, drop your temp down to 400, and then follow the directions on the package. So, sweetheart, can you go ahead and just open this up? All right. You guys want to make sure this is thawed out. The best way to thaw it is just leave it out for a couple hours or throw it in your fridge overnight. Um, if you really, really need to, you can put it in hot water um, and let it thaw out or... Uh, Mm, no, that's about it, but just make sure that you do not microwave it. So all he's done is take this and <laughs> it's empty, uh, puts it right in the middle. Now all he's going to do is form it out into the shape of a crust. And you can do a circle crust, you can do a square crust. You want to get it so it's about a half an inch thick, a um, lot thinner than that. So keep pushing it pretty hard and then it kind of smushes out as you're pushing down. This is easy. It is easy, honey. And you can go even more. Even more? Mm -hmm. Even more. He's a perfectionist. He is a perfectionist. And you guys, I want you to really understand, Mike is not a cook. So this, when you know, I say how easy it is, I wanted the man who's never done this before to actually show you. So all he's gonna do now is shove this thing in the oven for about 25 minutes. Um, oh yeah, and you can pat it around the side. If you guys see what he's doing, he's kind of creating a little lip, like a little crust lip. So you can do that. A lot of times also we make this in a square shape. So whatever shape you want to do it in is absolutely fine. But that's how easy it is. So now he's gonna throw this in the oven and then at, in about 25 to 30 minutes, you're going for a really nice golden brown. The darker brown it becomes without burning, of course, but the darker brown it is, the better it will actually hold. So you'll be able to pick it up like a piece of pizza. So we will be back with you guys in just a few minutes. Okay, so we just pulled this out of the oven and I want you guys to know that Mike had it um, a little bit thicker uh, so it took about 37 minutes. So I just want you to kind of play around. You'll want it to look, let's get the coloring. See how like nice dark brown it is? That's, that's how you'll want it to look. So Mike's gonna go ahead and top this. Um, what you guys, I just want you to know, uh, I've taken it out of the oven and I set it to broil. So you're going to broil it just for a few minutes on the top, um, literally about three minutes and it's going to be done. So make sure if you're topping it with meat today, Mike's just making a traditional pepperoni pizza. If you're putting meat on it, just make sure that the meat is cooked. So doesn't matter what you put on it, just make sure the meat's cooked because again, you're only broiling this for a few minutes. So if you want cooked vegetables, may want to saute them beforehand um, because again, it's only just a few minutes. Also caution on using a lot of cheese on the top. There is so much cheese baked into the crust uh, that you could go a little cheese overboard, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but all we're doing right now is marinara and some pepperoni, and then he'll hit it with um, just a few dashes of Parmesan cheese and some oregano. So then we'll put it in the oven and pull it out and slice and enjoy. That's it. Okay, so we had this under the broiler for only about two minutes. It really takes no time. 
And there is the finished product. See how beautiful that looks? He's a chef, you guys. Not really. And then all you do is slide it off. Watch out, babe. Slide it off like that. Go ahead and slice it however you guys want to. And, and then you, you should be able to just kind of scoop under it. And then you can eat it like a regular slice of pizza. Uh, if it's a little bit too runny for you and you end up using a fork, that could be because of two different reasons. One, if you did the quick thaw method where you put the bag in some hot water, you're going to have a lot of extra liquid from the sweating it does. Uh, so there's another video online. Make sure you check that out. You can just take some paper towels and on the edges and on the top just kind of dap away the water. Um, and then also you may not have left it in there enough for enough time. So that's why when you go to the golden brown, you can just eat it like a regular slice of pizza. It also makes for great leftovers. So wrap it up in tinfoil and the next morning you can have it cold. Thanks guys and thank you honey. You did so awesome. Didn't you do great you guys? Awesome. All right. Enjoy.